I had no idea that balloon fetish existed. It's just like, just people are into balloons. There's a fetish for everything. La de ellos se llama Lunar. O sea, hay un fetichismo de personas que les gustan los globos los y sienten globos. una excitación sexual. It's honestly just fun at the end of the day. Yeah. So even if you find it attractive, it's like, I think it's just fun and most people mm. could get My name is Lydia and if you're new here make sure that you are subscribed to the channel today We have a video that is unlike anything I've ever done before it is definitely going to be demonetized or Copyright strike if you would like to support my work in any way definitely check the description box down below I own a clothing store and we carry sizes small to 3x or you can go check my Twitter account for the content that I know you all want to see <laughs> I have spent many hours on this video So if you could give it a like and share with your friends and comment below I would appreciate that so much what the fetish is a series that I want to start doing where I take a deep dive into Online communities that involve fetishes or just things that people would typically think are odd I think that a lot of the times we look at things at face value and we see a clickbait title and we think oh my god these people are weird but I would love to spend time to find out what they're really about and share it with all of you so if we're gonna start off on this journey let's just start from the beginning I first heard about Lunars back in probably 20 18 when I saw a YouTube video that came up on a recommended page and it was from TLC and it was about a man that had a balloon fetish. This is gonna be epic. <laughs> As it's getting bigger, I get a little anxious, a little nervous. TLC highlighted his fetish and in true TLC fashion, they provided plenty of background music that truly emphasized how abnormal this fetish is. <laughs> oh my god. That was awesome. Oh yeah, I'm shaking, dude. Definitely. Definitely incredible. I guess pretty much all balloons deserve to die, right? I'm saying this like I wasn't just involved in a for a TLC show, but anyways. <laughs> so this raised the question: how abnormal is it actually? Is this a community of weird, sick, depraved, sexual <laughs> monsters that get aroused every time they're at a birthday party and they see a balloon? Or is this a group of people that share a common interest that can be sexual in nature? Today, you and I are going on a journey to get to the bottom of this very interesting fetish. Yeah, I feel like I'm in a place I would love to be in for the rest of my life. I, I think it's calming and very enjoyable. Before I really dove into the community, I wanted to try it for myself. So I hopped on Amazon and I ordered the cheapest pack of balloons that I could possibly get. Little did I know that would be my first mistake. <laughs> I eagerly awaited their arrival and then I went to YouTube and fetish clip sites to find out more about this fetish. Okay, so what am I supposed to do? You just blow them up. And then what? You pop them. Completely baffled by this, but then I discovered that it was absolutely fun as fuck. I couldn't believe it. And over time, I just decided, hey, this isn't that bad. And I decided, you know, what are the bigger balloons look like? I want to experience that. I wanted to hear from people that were actually catering to this fetish and see what they thought, what kind of content they were making, if the content was as easy as it seems at face value. You guys would be like, I really liked this, so, but could you do a little bit more of this? And then you're like, huh, all right, we'll try that. And then you realize, oh my God, you get more messages from more guys. Oh my God, you did that and that thing. And I, oh my God, that drove me crazy. And you realize, holy crap, it was just that one guy that had that fetish. And oh boy did I discover a whole world that I knew nothing about. She hasn't gotten to see them inflated. I have a couple like GL500 and stuff like that. And other she, litters out there will know. Yeah, and she knows all the balloon names <laughs> and all of the qualities and all of the sizes. Like she can just hold one up and be like, yeah, that's that's a 26. Is that a, I don't know the balloon size. But <laughs> yeah. When the package of balloons arrived, I immediately took out a red one. I took it outside and I started blowing it up. I realized, hey, 
I'm probably missing out on some money. So I started recording. Knowing that money for balloons sounds easy, right? But much to my surprise, after a whole month, my video got zero sales. <laughs> a big zero. I was shocked. Why would no one want to watch an average looking woman blow up a balloon and struggle and then not be able to tie it because she has nails? <laughs> My next step was to seek out lunars to speak to. I feel like they've been unfairly portrayed in TLC videos and many other videos that are all over the internet if you look. <laughs> Surprisingly, this is one of the only fetishes that is YouTube safe. There are plenty and plenty and plenty of lunar videos on YouTube. I knew that the only way to truly get to the bottom of this fetish was to speak to someone that has lived it and that has this fetish. So I did. This fetish has been used to add shock value and clickbait to TV shows and movies and YouTube videos alike. During my research, I found this TV show where this woman was on court TV and she was getting outed as a lunar. Yeah, le llama la atención los globos ahora. Exóticamente. ¿Cómo que exóticamente? Le excitan los globos a ella. Y llegó el momento que ella dijo, vamos a tratar, tú sabes, de hacer algo con los globos y con el sexo de nosotros. ¿Y qué? ¿Y qué? ¿Uno se está divirtiendo? No, no, pero es que... I soon realized that there was so much about this fetish that a simple Google search could just not provide me. I needed to take a deep dive into the world of Lunars and talk to one myself. Immediately I realized how closed off this tight-knit community was from outsiders, and with good reason. In the United States alone, it's estimated that there are between 250,000 and 500,000 self-identified Lunar fetishes. But I shot my shot and I made a post on a forum asking for people that wanted to be interviewed for my YouTube video, and luckily, Jeff replied. I got him to interview with me and answer some of mine and my followers questions and we actually ended up talking for almost an hour. He was super forthcoming, super respectful and honestly his face reveal, okay, alright ladies. <laughs> I know this video might be a bit long but I promise you this interview is so interesting to me and I'm sure that you guys will find it interesting too. So shout out to Lunar Jeff, thank you so much for being willing to interview, literally the only person that was willing and came through so thank you for helping me make this video happen. I hope that you guys enjoy this interview as much as I did. I want to start off by saying thank you for being willing to do this. Um, I'm sure you know that I've come to realize that the, I don't know if this is the proper term, but the Lunar community is very like closed off and I think it's because of the way that other videos have portrayed them. Yeah. I watched a bunch yesterday, like anything that YouTube had to offer because I just wanted to learn more. And I felt like a lot of them came at it in a way that was like, wow, look at this weird person. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think, it, and not to get like political, but it seems like most of the media nowadays is just like, hey, what's something that's going to get people to click on it? Like, hey, how about look at these weird people? So they, like they were making know. fun of him and they were really and trying to like hype music. him up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The music was all creepy and they like kind of like clown themed and I was like, okay, man, we're not, like it's a weird fetish, but it's not that weird. <laughs> the devil works hard, but the TLC producers work harder. Oh my sure. gosh, man. Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to make sure. Like, I'm, I'm actually pretty comfortable with it now. And it was like, even if I, I share an apartment with my brother, so mm -hmm. I was like, even if he were to find out, I, I think it'd be chill, you know? It's so strange to me that it's something that families would even really care about though, because it's not like you're hurting anyone. Mm -hmm. um, I could see if they were like, oh, I don't get it, but like do your thing. But it, it is one of those fetishes where I feel like a lot of people, they're scared to tell others about it just because of the judgment. And in my opinion, I feel like there shouldn't be judgment because it's not like you're hurting another person. Yeah. It's you and an object that you enjoy. But oh, I totally agree. It's <laughs> if, if you're looking on the the scale of like harmless to the the not acceptable to the like oh whoa man, I, I think it's pretty harmless. I wanted to start off with you just introduce yourself and kind of what you identify as. I've been <laughs> using the term lunar, but I don't know if that's completely correct. Got it. <laughs> and and like I think anyone, if you can just Google it real quick, like yeah, lunar is pretty much the term that most people go by. And mm -hmm. uh so yeah, my me, um my name's Jeff. My name I'm Jeff. 25 currently mm -hmm. and I live in Colorado. So I've been out oh, here awesome. for like quite a few years. Yeah. Like more than half of my life now. But um yeah and as far as I would consider myself a lunar and then a kind of the community somewhat breaks it down into two categories i've found they've got like 
subsections of the community, which usually is poppers and non poppers. When and I was so, doing my research, <laughs> I, I learned about that. And that's actually one of my questions for you was the differences between poppers and non poppers. Looking at the BDSM community, they have like the whole subculture of, okay, there's, there's, you got dons and subs. So I almost treat it like that. They're like two different yeah. spheres within the same overall fetish, but mainly it's, uh, and I don't speak for all people who call themselves lunars by any means. And one, right. one thing I've found, which I think is cool is like, it seems like people enjoy it for different reasons, like all mm -hmm. over the spectrum. Like there are some things that most people agree make it like what, what you enjoy, but yeah, yeah. There seems to be a wide range of experience, which is really cool to see. But, so would you be a popper <laughs> or a non-popper? I have to ask. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And here's something you'll find too, if you look into this more, most people, I, I think it's a fetish where it's not just the object, but there is kind of like a psychological aspect behind it. Mm -hmm. And most people I've found, especially guys in the community that I've talked to, the, the way they seem to, to come about being a lunar, and this is the, this is kind of my story is you start off extremely phobic. And I was, I was like, I didn't like balloons. I, I was fascinated by them as a kid, but like, mm. I didn't like them because the pop just absolutely scared the shit out of That's me. That's how right? I feel. That's so, how I was. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like, to some degree, I still consider myself phobic. Like I have to wear earplugs and there are some mm. crazy people in this community who like, <laughs> they will purposely like blow to pop a balloon without earplugs. And it's like, mm. that's <laughs> no. really loud. Yeah. yeah. And don't get me wrong. That's, and so there is like kind of a, a whole anticipation and the fear factor of it. Yeah. You know, like fear is a great aphrodisiac. So <laughs> that seems to play into the, the culture as well as like this whole, how close can you get, with it, you know. It, Without it's an, it popping. And then when it does, yeah. it's like a release almost, Yes, right? it's like a, like a catharsis, yeah. So yeah. do you like the popping or do you like not popping? Um, Nowadays, there's kind of an in-between, which people call like semi-poppers. So I guess mm -hmm. I would consider myself that now. Mm -hmm. I've had this fetish probably ever since like I hit puberty. Like, oh, really? Realized, That's so interesting. Yeah, yeah. Like coming. So what's strange is like, to me, it's not, I don't know, like some people's fetishes and such, they put such a priority on them. Like, hey, mm -hmm. if I were in a relationship, they would need to have this. And for yeah. me, it's like, it's a huge part of my sexuality and it has been for the greater half of my life mm -hmm. but it's like it wouldn't be a need it would just be like the the pile of cherries on top this fetish is so important in my life and makes me so happy then with a, a female i really believe that would be a make or break if I had a female partner, I would really like to see them ride a balloon. I like watching them inflate balloons until they pop. Personally, for me, like I have a couple of things where I'm like, I need this in a relationship. And then I have a couple where I'm like, well, if they don't want it, it's okay. It wouldn't be a deal breaker, but it'd be like, hey, this would we be should nice. Turn this, <laughs> this will be a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. I, I was watching one of those videos and they had this couple that was both into it or he was into it first and she was into it after yes. it. And I could tell that they were kind of like making fun of them, but I thought it was cute because it, it wasn't her fetish, mm -hmm. but then she wanted to please him. So then they both got super into it. So I thought that was like yeah. super adorable. I understand the fear of like telling people, oh, I'm into this thing. Cause I definitely have some interests where I have to think like, is it even worth telling a partner that I'm with? Like, what are they going to say? Are they not going to like me? <laughs> and so I feel like, yeah, this is probably one of those where since it's a little, not abnormal in a bad way, but it's like not the common fetish. It's not like, oh, I like to be choked. Whenever I was doing my research, I did see that, um, I think the Discovery Channel, they claimed that there's like over 250,000 people worldwide that are into this, but the majority are men. Mm -hmm. And the women are actually outnumbered. So it's uh, for every 30 men, there's one woman that's into it. And then I guess the majority of people are uh, in their 20s to 30, which I thought was interesting because it's like, mm. so So once you like settle down, do you stop liking this? I want to ask you, and if it's too personal, you don't have to answer, but when did you realize that you had this? Okay, okay. So it's, 
It's a complicated question. I've thought about it because I, I like psychology in general. So I like, I've thought about these things forever and I've tortured myself like, why, did, why do I have this fetish? And how can right. I, I actually like, it bothered me so much for a while. I was like, can I get rid of it? Oh. And like, I'm, I'm totally cool with it now because I yeah. realized it's something so harmless. And it's like, if you're, exactly. you just got to be open-minded. And I think it's super, it's honestly just fun at the end of the day. Yeah. So even if you find it attractive, it's like, I think it's just fun. And most mm. people could get I would, it was definitely when I was a kid because it started more as a fascination. And I remember mm -hmm. like a lot of my, maybe not a lot, but there are distinct childhood memories I have that mm -hmm. involve balloons that definitely like, if you were to map that out, if you were to go all Sigmund Freud on it, you know, it makes sense. It'd be <laughs> like, oh, this totally makes sense. But um, I'd say it didn't become sexual until like definitely the time I hit puberty. I think what kind of crystallized it as well was I had like a general phobia and fascination of balloons. Mm -hmm. And then I remember there were times in like, like elementary and even middle school where like, I, you know, there were girls I had a crush on and like there'd be an instance where they'd have a balloon and it's like, I don't know, it's just like, it just fits, you know, they yeah. go together so well. And, it, and so I think that as well like in that context kind of crystallized it for me as well. I wanted to know what specifically is it that you enjoy? You've kind of touched on this, but something that I noticed, because yesterday I actually made my first lunar video on this fetish clip site. And after playing with the balloon, I realized that my hands smelled like, mm -hmm. and I thought I liked it. Like maybe not in a sexual way, but I like kept smelling my yes. hands. Like, I'm preaching to the choir, right? right? But, but like it, no, no, no. Oh, that's so cool to hear that. This is why, I'm, I'm so glad to hear that because this is why most people, if they just gave it a shot, they, they might be surprised. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it was like, like a sexual. Good smell, right? it, yeah. it's, it's a distinct smell though. Like it's very, yeah. almost like gasoline. Like, and maybe yeah, that's more, yeah. because I like the smell of gasoline, but it's not like a good smell. It's just distinct. And like latex is the same way for me. Okay, so yeah. like one of my favorite aspects is like if, you fill a room with balloons and and then you were to I don't know just leave them there for even like an hour mm -hmm. you'll go out of the room and come back in later and you'll be like oh my gosh like it hits you and at least mm -hmm. for me it's almost like to me it's like a sexual trigger like it, I don't know if it's mm -hmm. sexual to me but it's definitely like something that stood out about the experience you know what kind of balloon it was by chance so I actually have them here. I have, I have them here with me, but um, yeah. I none of them are blown up. But it's just like these ones I got off of Amazon. Um, mm. It just nice. says made in China. I I really don't yep. know anything there, about this. I can this. tell you right now. I'm such a fucking nerd about this stuff. So I also wanted to ask: Are there any terms that we should know? Like I know there's the term lunar, and there's pop versus non-pop. And then I heard you said semi-pop, right? Are there any more yeah. that? that you think that people should know? Okay, so the terminology is largely in the brand and size of balloons. So okay. that's something that like, I've heard some people who come into the community new, they're like, I feel like I'm kind of in an elitist community because they're throwing around like these letters and numbers. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, so like, I'll give you an example. Like one of my favorite balloons, it's, it's from a company, the manufacturing company is Tough Tex and the size of the balloon is 24 inches. So the kind of a call out, I guess you could say in the community is a, it's a TT24, Tough Text 24. See, I could so, never keep up, <laughs> I could never keep up with yeah, those. Yeah, actually one that I've got. Um, hold on, I just yeah, got out like. Bring them out, let me oh, see. Wow. I was doing it with my mouth and I felt lightheaded for a second. I was like, whoa, <laughs> what's happening? Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I've never like, blown up a balloon before, so. <laughs> Yeah. And, and especially when you got those 36 inch ones, like, yeah, you'll pass out. And I think, I think that's part of the appeal too. I'm not going to lie. I like can see that. I can... in the head, you start getting like pins and needles in your finger. I can see that definitely. I guess it's probably <laughs> the same uh, feeling that like getting choked gives you. After, and that's the thing. There's so many different aspects about it that, that I think if you just pay attention, like they're very sensual objects. Mm -hmm. And and I think part of the stigma as well that bothers me is like oh, people always see them as a like a, a kid's toy, right? Mm -hmm. Especially in the US. I don't know if this is really a thing in Europe, but like in the US, like to like balloons are for kids, right? So yeah. that that kind of is But like, I like balloons. I want someone to bring me balloons for my birthday. For, like <laughs> Or for guys though too. For guys, like I've told a few of my friends. And I've told one of my friends who's a girl, I'm like, 
I mean, they're all cool. They, they, they were just like, really? Like, that's, huh, like, that's strange. I have a story for you, and I want your opinion on this. Okay, so whenever I was, I'm 23 right now. Whenever I was 18 and 19 years old, I worked at a strip club, and I was a waitress. And so the waitresses couldn't give lap dances, but what we could do is do these things called balloon pops. And Oh, wow. Yeah, See, so they're sexual, see, everyone knows. Listen, yes, so what we would do is we would go to the back and we had this like, is it helium? I don't know. I, I probably sound stupid, but we had this like thing, yeah, you know, with probably the gas. Like a big helium and we would fill it up and then we would tie it. I could never tie it because I always had nails. So I had to have someone else tie it for yeah. me. Um, but then we'd bring it to the customer and we would put it on their lap and then we would dance on them until they pop. So it was like, yeah, yeah. customers like a lap down dance with, with the, the balloon. balloon. Yes, and so this yes. is free advertising for Deja Vu clubs, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but basically what I would do, because I didn't get paid from it, it actually just like made the made the club money unless the person tipped me, mm. but I would do the dance, and I <laughs> this is so fucked up, but I had sharp nails, <laughs> so I would yes. like dance for a second, and then I would like pull the end and make it pop like pretty fast because I wanted the yeah, dance yeah. to be over. <laughs> oh my so God. like, is that something that... First of all, was the owner of the club a lunar? No, I'm just kidding. But like, maybe you never know. Is that something that would like appeal to to lunars? Like going to a club and being able to get a, a girl dancing on them until the balloon pops, or was that just like a oh, a absolutely. sexy thing that everyone would enjoy? Because in my opinion, I hated oh, it. Well, I hated the poppy noise. That's it the was, thing. It was fun, but I yeah. hated I hated knowing that it was gonna pop. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's like for most people, it's kind of just one of those like, do you like? are you okay with loud noise? Is it not? And it's yeah. like, so most people, and what I would just recommend is like use earplugs and you'll be, right. you'll be shocked at how, like they are so loud without earplugs. I'll just occasionally from time to time, like pop one without mm. earplugs. And oh I'm my like, God. yeah, yeah. I wouldn't do that too often. It's can pretty loud. Can your neighbors <laughs> hear? Like I'm wondering like if you oh. live in an apartment or something, can neighbors hear or? That is like, that is the plight of lunars. I, I shit you not. It's like, <laughs> If you read on forums and stuff, it's like everyone, the big question is like, where do I engage in this without like freaking the out my the field. Like, in the yeah, middle of the field with a yeah. giant balloon. Well, there are a bunch of like places out here in the mountains and like they're mm -hmm. super pretty too. And you can just go out there, get high and like getting high in balloons, by the way. If you don't think you'll like it for anyone, your audience, get high and play with balloons. You'll, you'll just be blown away. Like, honestly, no pun intended. I think that we've made everyone wait long enough. We should bust out the balloons. <laughs> Heck yeah. So I've got okay. four here. Look at what I have. I have a whole bag. What color is your favorite? <laughs> I would say... Uh, and every color. Overall, probably like crystal purple is usually... Oh, so this one right here. Or that one, yeah. It looks like a flat purple, but that's cool. I'll show you what I got. I think I only got have this one. I'll do purple. Or I have, uh, yeah, no, this is, this is the closest. People are going to be hey, like, your coffee symbol is a bench. And like, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> this one's kind of so, cool, too. Look, it's like gold. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Hold on. All right, yeah, demonstrate. Yeah. I'm going to have to blow this one up by my mouth. <laughs> right is there a way to reverse the camera direction? Okay, Sorry. I'm probably going to struggle blowing this up. People, just to give you a size, like a perspective. Mm -hmm. This is like most people's like normal right. like, like, balloon. Yeah, like they'll, they'll go up to this big. So like, Wait, oh my gosh, is this one going to get really long? <laughs> I, I can blow this one up first. Okay, it's, yes. It gets like freaking huge. Yes, so I'm, I'm actually going to have to put down my, my camera, but yeah. <laughs> That's give okay. me like a minute here. I'll oh, be wait, blowing I'm, that up. <laughs> I'm gonna try, while you do that, I'm gonna try to blow this up with my mouth. <laughs> It's like shaped weird. Why? I want it to be a perfect probably circle. It's, it's probably because the China ones. If you want like a perfectly round one, get like a bell ball 24 inch. I'll never remember that. <laughs> <laughs> if this pops, I'm going to be pissed. 
I'm probably gonna cry. Okay, let's see. Oh my god! That's the whole count. <laughs> it should keep going too, like. It's kind of cool how it, I like that it's transparent. It's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. But do the transparent yeah, ones, ones pop easier or? I would say most of the time, no. You should grab your balloon. You should have it in the frame with you. <laughs> I have some questions that my fans want to ask you. So I'm going to read them off and some yeah. of them, some of them we've actually already covered. So I'll just skip over those. But um, this one is from Dr. Trinium. I'm probably saying that wrong, but they said, is it all balloons? Latex versus mylar? I don't know what that means. Um, yes. Or, or is it anything inflated? Beach balls, pool toys? That's a, yeah, yeah. So I would say they're all kind of within the same like overall family mm -hmm. of, of like the fetish, but yeah, inflatables are kind of their own thing. So whatever like the vinyl they use for inflatables, some people really like that. Some people mm -hmm. like balloons and inflatables. And then there's even like a certain sect of people who like the mylar balloons and that's like- What the, is mylar? They're like the metal ones, you know? Oh, like, like, like the get well soon balloons. Yes. Yes. Oh and yeah, because like, you never see that like in the in the lunar content. I haven't seen anyone like with one of those. Yeah. But those are those are like the ones that you could suck the helium yes. out. <laughs> Gigi, she asked a question, but I'm gonna word it a little differently because we actually did cover part of this. But they basically want to know: Is there anything that you're not turned on by about the whole lunar thing? Like, is there something that other people love and you're just like, uh, mm. not my thing? Or is it kind of just you're down for all yeah. of it? Probably the biggest like buzz kill, and it's like one of the only ones is underinflated balloons. Like this so, like, one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but it's okay. You just keep adding more air. That's the plus side. <laughs> but yeah, I'm so <laughs> I would say most people like them to be like fully inflated, if not overinflated, to the point where they're about to pop on their own. But uh, other than that, no. I, I think that's about it. You know what? Does this tie into the bimbo fetish? Because there's like an inflation <laughs> fetish within like bimbofication where they like yes. the girls to get like bigger tits. They like seeing their lips expand. I wonder if they it's a like part of the brain fetish. that's connected. Fetish, is there something? <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. My, I have this whole theory too that like a lot of fetishes get imprinted on you and then like you just kind of can't get out of them. Yeah. So, there's a lot of psychology behind it. But Nate asked if the aluminum foil kind of balloons count. So to so some people Sorry, they do, but I'm to you, say no. no, yeah. For, so for they don't count. Okay. okay. Not not for me. But don't get me wrong. There are pe there are groups of people who like those, and there are groups of people who like. There are people who even like like long latex gloves. You know, the ones that nurses yeah. are using to their elbows. Some people like those, and you can even inflate those too. Okay, and then <laughs> someone said, is having a balloon fetish expensive? I saw the prices keep going up because of inflation. Oh, <laughs> man, yes. thank you. Thank you. I'm glad someone jumped in this. <laughs> so someone said I'd ask why in all caps. <laughs> you know, mate, I've been asking myself that question for 25 years. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> And what I landed on was, I, I think it's just, I don't know why I have it and I don't know why I like them, but like, mm. I enjoy it. And so I think yeah. if people just come in with that mindset and are willing to give something a try, it's like, I think there are plenty of things about it for people to enjoy. Yeah. Just, just if you come in with an open mind and you're looking to spice things up a little bit there, you wouldn't believe like on these forums, how many different ways people have like incorporated into their sex life. I can definitely see the appeal, like from someone looking in, I can see why others would be. And I, I don't think that there's anything wrong with it. I don't think, do I think it's weird? Yes, but not in a bad way to where it's like harmful or anything. Um, exactly. <laughs> I, I think that it's just people that found an interest that they like. Now my last question, cause I don't want to keep you all day. If someone is a lunar, where can they connect with other lunars other than that life? Are there forums that we don't know about? Are there? Yes. Uh, let's hear no. it. You don't have to expose it's, it's any of, if you want to, if you want to keep them private, yeah. you don't have to, um, like you don't have to say specific websites, but I guess I would just ask like, do you guys connect on forums? Do you guys have yeah, meetups? Yeah, sure. Like how do you meet people that are also into this? I would say if you're looking to like talk to someone like actually 
get in a conversation with someone to ask them like, hey, how did you become a lunar, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Probably the best place is going to be like Facebook or there's like a Russian Facebook. It's called VK, like Victor oh. Kilo. So uh-huh. it's like Russian Facebook, but that's like, that actually might be one of the biggest communities right now. So whenever you connect with other lunars, is it in a sexual way or is it just kind of like two people bonding over a similar fetish? Because I know with some fetishes, mm-hmm. when you talk to other people about it, it's like, you know, it's sexual undertones, but I feel like in this one, a lot of the community is just, like, sharing a common interest, and, like, you know, Mm -hmm. it's mostly guys, and so it's not guys wanting to, you know, hook up with each other, it's guys wanting to share, like, oh, I got this, there's a pronounced, like, there, there's, for some reason, I, I don't know why, but there definitely is, like, uh like a section of the lunar community for gay guys like that's Mm. definitely a pretty big part of the community as well so like for me i'm hetero but there are yeah there are a lot of gay guys and that's cool like Mm -hmm. way to go brother but yeah (laughs) i would say yeah like mainly just social media they're just small groups popping over all over so okay awesome um, recommend people look into it because like I, I think it's a blast. <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to say thank you so much for being willing. Wait, should I let the air yeah. out of this? Oh, go for it. I, I could let the air out of mine. <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you so much for being willing to talk to me and open up about this. Yeah. I know it's not easy to talk to a random stranger about intimate parts of your life, but I appreciate you being willing. And I think that this video is going to do really good. I think that even if it only gets... 5,000 views. There's mm-hmm. 5,000 people that have changed their perspective on I agree. the Spanish, and I think that's yeah, great. Yeah, thank you so. for the opportunity, and I think yeah. I think we got, like, pretty well into it, too. Much better than, like, TLC or Vite. So. <laughs> no, yeah. Thank you for just being, like, a reasonable person with this as well. So, I, I it, try it, my best to be. After doing this interview, I feel like I understood the fetish so much more, and this is just one person's opinion. It doesn't even speak for the whole community, but I feel like I truly understand it. Do I think that there a group of weird sick people that get aroused every time that they see a blow up inflatable no that i i don't think that i never did but now i especially don't i think that this is just a group of people that have a common interest for whatever reason and they're not hurting anyone now we can point fingers and laugh and judge them but i know that we all have skeletons in our closet and these are just balloon shaped (laughs) Sorry, that was a bad joke. Yeah, so shout out to the Lunar community. I hope that this video did you justice. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was much longer than my usual content, so I hope that you enjoyed and you stuck with me the whole time. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye! Comment below what fetish you want me to do next. Life is just taking its turn for the worst. Ben's doing dailies. Life is shit. And you know what? I never even liked Despicable Me.